Pam pam pa pa pam pa ba da ba dam pam pa bam pam. Everybody and welcome to another Drum Lessons with Mr. Rickman. Um, we are having a look at an African flavoured pattern called the Nanaigo. Can you say Nanaigo? Nanaigo! Very good. Um, first we need to know what a double paradiddle is. I'm sure you know what a normal paradiddle is. It's a pattern of hands that goes right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Single, double, single, double. Now, a double paradiddle has double the amount of singles at the start. It's got double the singles. That's confusing. Normal paradiddle would go right, left, right, right. Double paradiddle goes right, left, right, left, right, right. You do two pairs of singles before your double. And then, of course, you repeat it on the left hand. As always, please reverse this if you are left-handed. So, let's get our hands working. I'm going to play a tom and a snare. You can play whatever you've got. Two knees, a pillow and a hamster, whatever you like. That's a joke. Don't use your hamster. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Um, let's do it a few times round. One, two, here we go. not particularly exciting by itself. So, let's, where's my pen? There it is. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to make this left hand at the start of the second half, this left hand's gonna be accented. So I'm gonna give it a little arrowhead, which means accent. And to make that accent stand out, I'm gonna make all my other lefts very quiet little ghost notes you would call those. So normal right hands, soft lefts, apart from this one, we're gonna wallop it. Sounds like this. get that a little faster it'll sound like this which is quite neat sounds like there's a lot of scuttling little noises going on And that's what a nanaigo sounds like. Uh, how else can we develop this? Well, as always, there's a million potential ways we could. Let's make it feel a little more rock beat flavoured. 
I'm going to stick a bass drum with the first hit and I'm still going to wallop this left hand but I'm not going to make it sound all tribal and tomsy. I'm going to make it sound more rocky by right hand on the ride cymbal, left hand on the hi-hat, closed. So the basic pattern would go and that's going to make the bass drum and this left, which we will do on the snare drum, stand out. That's going to be a snare drum. So slowly that would sound like Faster, that would sound like. A little bit faster, that would sound like. Even faster, it would sound like. So what you mainly hear is the bass and the snare. Quite slow, quite calm. But then you put in all the lovely tick, 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 tick on the cymbals. Which is lovely. Bonga digga da chang, digga da bonga digga da chang. Um, so the rest of this lesson will be me developing this a little bit further. Of course, the first thing you should be doing is mastering the right and left pattern. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Because if that isn't strong, you're going to struggle with all of the developments. Anyway, let's presume everyone's currently happy with the hand pattern and we can push our luck with the development a little bit. Now, because this pattern lasts for six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, it feels three-ish in its... Rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, so we're going to make the threes stand out a bit more by sticking a bass drum on every three notes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And last of all, one, two, three. Um, we'll leave. I'm going to play that on the snare drum. You can just leave it on whatever if you want, or you can try and bring it down to your snare drum if you're doing that. So first I'll do the hands, then I'll sneak in the bass drums, okay? Hands first. Three and a four and a... This time the bass drums are coming in. Bit 
faster. That's quite neat. I like it. it sounds groovy. Maybe if you were playing this in a song, you would start with just one bass drum at the start, and then later on, to make it seem bigger and fuller, you could bring in the rest of the bass drums. That's cool. I like it. Um, so that's what you can do with your bass drum to develop it. Let's get rid of these bass drums for a second and we'll focus on just the hands. Da, 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 da. Right. So let's presume that everything is played on the cymbals. The ride and the hi-hats. Unless we write a letter next to it, okay? Da dee da dee da da snare. Um, I'm going to make these two right hands on a low tom. So loads of symbols, but we're going to get low, low snare in the middle. Which will sound like this. Missed it that time. Which is lovely. Um, I'll stick a bass drum at the start and speed it up a little bit. Now I love that in the middle. Ba -ba -ba! It makes the snare stand out even more because you lead up to it with those two low toms. Ba -da 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 -da! Great. Um, in fact, I want to lead up to that snare drum even more. So I'm going to use even more toms. I'll start off with a high tom on this right hand, a middle tom on this right hand, and then my next right hand lead me into the snare. After that, just back to cymbal calmness. Again, if you've got the basic hand pattern practiced, that will help you hugely. So I'm starting out on a high tom and a hi hat. That's quite nice. Doesn't sound very exciting slow. But, if I speed it up... It comes to life a little bit more. Let's try a tiny bit faster. To life even more. I'll stick a bass drum at the start again to make it to make that feel like the start. Got that wrong. You could even leave your right hand on the low tom once you arrive there. point is, if you know the hand pattern really well, you don't have to think about it constantly, and then you can just move your hand wherever, and it will continue the correct pattern. Doom, doom, da, da, da. 
or I could go up my toms the wrong way. Or I could go down and then up. The possibilities are endless. Yeah, the double paradiddle. It comes to life as the nanaigo. But it is useful anywhere you can use it. Uh, let's imagine I'm playing... Let's imagine I'm playing something a bit more funky. I could go for a very boring rock fill. That's all right. That's okay, that's okay. But I could squeeze in a little bit of quick, tricky, double paradiddle action. And then it won't feel like a fill, it won't feel like I'm interrupting the groove to do a big thing. It'll feel like I'm in, I'm just spicing up the groove occasionally. Watch this. Did you spot it? Such a useful little pattern. Um, so, yeah, that comes to the end of all I have to say to you today. It's a simple pattern, like so many of them are, which we start with. But if you put in a little bit of work and a little bit of time, they will come to life. They will become easier. They will naturally be able to speed up. And then you spice it up by quietening it down, but smacking something in the middle. Or you add loads of bass drums, or both feet. Or you put a bass drum with all the right hands. Or you mix and match. You know, if you explore this in enough different ways, you'll be able to play for ages using just the hand pattern, making little changes in development. And there you have music. There you have music. So I'm going to finish out the lesson by just playing for a minute, showing you a few different things we can do with this. And... Uh, hopefully inspire you to practice it a little bit and get it strong for yourself.
very much, everybody. That is this week's lesson. Vina Nago. Good luck practicing that. Thank you very much. <laughs>